Hi everyone. There have been a lot of people that have been waiting for this video for a long time and the delay has been because the more I looked at this, the deeper the rabbit hole went and it was unbelievable. And I want everybody to know that yes, there is something to be concerned about, but it's not the COVID-19. There's other things that we need to be really concerned about, but I know that people are going to be right, uh, see what's right in front of their face first and what's being shoved down their throats and that's what they're being told. So let's talk a little bit about the basic facts. And this is going to be a relatively short video and I may keep it in conjunction with the rest of it because I, I need to go in and talk about three specific areas that I really want to focus in on. I'm saying it right now this way, but it may end up being just one long video that you're going to get or you may end up getting a couple of different videos. But let's just cover the basics first that I want you to be aware of, that it's important that you guys are aware of this. All right. Here's the first site that I want to cover. And this is the world of meter. The world of meter is a site that basically talks about all the different statistics on a global scale. So here we see the world's population 7.772 billion currently, um, based upon 2020 only there are 31 million births this year so far. Um, today there's been 358,000 births, pretty amazing deaths so far this year, 13, million deaths so far since January 1st, 2020. Net populations increased by 18 million, meaning that the number of people that have died from whatever, um, and then you take the number of people that have been born and you take the number of people born, subtract from that how many people died. We have had a net gain population of 18 million people so far this year. And they measure all sorts of different things, public health care, expenditure, society, media, environment, food, water, energy. Let's look at health. 2,876,688 people that have died this year so far in the, in the first three months. And today's March 21st, 2020. So we haven't even hit the first quarter of this year so far. But still, we've had 2.876 million people that have died of communicable diseases. So far this year, we've had 107,000 deaths due to the seasonal flu. We've had 1.68 million deaths of children under the age of five. We've had 9.4 million abortions so far this year. We've had 68,493 deaths of mothers, 68,493 deaths of mothers during the process of giving birth. HIV number of people infected over 41 million so far this year. And of those 372,519 that died from HIV, we've had over 1 million eight hundred and nineteen thousand almost one million eight hundred and twenty thousand deaths from cancer alone so far this year all right and this is something that i've talked a lot about like if you're worried about coronavirus why aren't you worried about cancer because your incidence of getting cancer in at least north america is one out of two men and one out of three women will get cancer sometimes in their life that's what the statistics are so why are you worried about that uh covid 19 issue when you should be more worried about the cancer because the chances of you getting the cancer are a hell of a lot higher than of getting covid 19 but Again, people are freaking out about this, but I think that's pay based upon the hysteria that's been promoted by the government and by, by the powers that be. And of course, people are going to blame me for being irresponsible by saying that, you know, I'm promoting and downplaying this serious issue. Nobody's saying that people haven't died from the coronavirus, okay? I'm saying, wait a second, let's look at the numbers and, and wait and see what the numbers are and wait to see this video and then, then you can pass judgment. I'm not here to say, uh, do X or do Y. I'm here just to show you the facts and then let you determine. If you think it warrants the type of mass mobilization that they've done, the government's done, then fine, participate in it. But there's something very, very suspect, and you will know that in less than two minutes because I'm going to first talk about the number of deaths. Because the number of people that have died of coronavirus compared to the number of people that have died from other sources to do with health in the, in the world since March, uh, since January 1st, 2000. 20 is less than 0.1 percent okay we've got 1.8 million people that died of cancer so far on the planet this year in the first three months less than the first quarter of this year and nobody's talking about that let's go on 1,107 deaths due to smoking so far this year over half a million deaths from alcohol 554,000 deaths from alcohol 237,633 suicides so far this year. All right. Road traffic deaths, pedestrian motor vehicle accidents, 299,000 
so far this year. Almost 300,000 people have died just in car wrecks, motor vehicle accidents this year. Now let's compare that to coronavirus. Hmm. And the number of people that have died of coronavirus, 13,050, with 95,000 recovered. And those people that have recovered, important to note, important to note, were sick for less than 48 hours, most of them 24 hours. We'll talk about that and we'll show some footage on that. Now, why isn't the media talking about this? This is a self-limiting disease, but I want to show you something about the coronavirus that's very, very important. There's going to be a number of things we're going to discuss, but again, this hopefully puts it into perspective, okay? Now, if you really want to understand what a 0.1% is, because remember, that's 13 million people have died on the planet this, so far this year, and only 13,000 have been due to the coronavirus, okay? Here are the numbers again. 13 million deaths so far this year, of which 13,000 or 1 1,000th have been coronavirus related. Let's make sure my math is right. 13,000 would be 130, 1.3. Yeah, 13 million. So one out of a thousand have died from coronavirus, and yet people are losing their gourd about this. Now, let's just talk about the, some of the basics, okay? So um, Green Med Info had a pretty good uh, executive summary on this, so I'll just kind of, I, I found this amusing. The world is suffering from a massive delusion based on the belief that the a test for RNA is a test for a deadly new virus, a virus that has emerged from wild bats in China, supported by the Western assumption that Chinese people will eat anything that moves. Now, I found that amusing, and that's basically, in a nutshell, exactly what has happened. Now, this is what I really want to talk about from the testing aspect. We're going to talk about the testing. We're going to talk about toxicity. We're going to talk about 5G, because that's been a big issue, and there is a real issue behind that. And then we're going to talk about the, the censorship and what's happened, and then we're going to go into this in a much much more deeper component. And just so you, I can show you something real quick, I want you guys to all be aware of this. This is actually my outline. And those of you that know me know I'd never make an outline. So this is a, really the outline. We're going to talk about the background, and testing, and nuances uh, about the coronavirus. We're going to go into the coronavirus history. We're going to go into the 5G networks and, and the health implications of that. And then we're going to talk about what you can do. All right. So we're going to go through this. And I've got a lot of different references that I have gone through and gathered but anyway let's come back to the rna virus issue for a second now scientists are detecting a novel rna in multiple patients with influenza and pneumonia like conditions and are assuming that the detection of this rna which is believed to be wrapped up in proteins to form an rna virus such as coronavirus they're believed to be that this is the equivalent of isolating the virus now i want you to understand this nobody has ever seen the actual virus and isolated it what they've done is they've taken the rna components of it certain components of the virus and then tested for that and they have made the extrapolation that this is uh what a person has you know they have the virus now i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about the testing and the false positives a little bit later but let's just make sure that we understand this part this is not the same thing it is not according to green med info and they're absolutely right it is not the same thing when you see the RNA as if it's the actual virus that you're seeing that's causing the problem. And one group of scientists was on enough to admit this. Okay, they, they, they were quoted in a study saying, we did not perform tests for detecting infectious virus in the blood. Despite this admission early in the paper, they repeatedly referred to the 41 cases out of 59 similar cases that had tested positive for this RNA as 41 patients confirmed to be infected with, C, with the 2019 NCOV, which now is called... COVID-19. Another paper silently, quietly admitted our study does not fulfill Koch's postulate. Now, who was Koch? Koch was a virologist, a bacteriologist that lived around the turn of the century in the 1800s, and he developed certain standards that are today considered to be the gold standard before you can make any type of a, a claim uh, validity-wise from a study standpoint, etc. Now, Koch's postulate states a number of different things, but these are the points that the uh, these studies did not fulfill Koch's postulates. First, you have to first purify the, path, the pathogen. In other words, you have to actually make sure it's that pathogen or whatever, whether it's bacteria, virus, in this case a virus, that it's actually the virus that's causing the particular illness that's being described. That's the first portion. Then you have to expose the susceptible animals. Of course, you know, I'm not talking about humans here, but that's what Koch's postulate is, that you expose the susceptible animal to the pathogen, and then you have to verify that the illness that's being observed is actually produced by this whatever this pathogen is and then on the back end once you've established that then you should re 
isolate and repurify the pathogen to make sure it's actually the etiological component, that it's actually the causative component that's causing this issue to be there. Now, this is the basics of the Koch postulate. These studies did not meet Koch's postulate, all right? So it's important to remember that. Now, uh, famous virologist Thomas Rivers in a 1936 speech, so that's about 90 years ago, 90, uh, 85 years ago, uh, made the comment that it is obvious that Koch's postulates have never been satisfied or have not been satisfied in viral diseases. Now, that was a long time ago, but what's interesting is that it's still basically the same issue right now. Okay, none of the papers referenced in this article have, in, in the Green Meds article, have actually been able to successfully purify the virus, isolate and purify the virus. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to let you guys know. Am I saying that there's no such thing as a, vi as a COVID-19 virus? No, that's not what I'm saying. And yes, there are people that have died from it, but I'm going to talk about some of the things, you know, there's such a, a thing as a placebo, everybody knows it, but there's also such a thing as a placebo, which is basically the opposite of a placebo. If you think something's going to cause a problem, it's going to cause a problem. And I want you to go back and think about this for a second. Most of the cases, the, the countries that have been hit, hardest hit are Italy and and Iran. And I'm going to explain why Italy and Iran, because a lot of people say it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to show you the reason why Italy and Iran here in, uh, in, a, in a moment. But Italy has already reported 99% of the people, over 99% of the people that have died from the coronavirus in Italy had other serious medical conditions. Okay, so it wasn't the coronavirus that killed them. And remember, nobody's reporting all the thousands and thousands of recoveries. And the vast majority of the people have recovered, okay? Again, you go back to the world worldometer and you look at the coronavirus. And again, Newsweek was honest enough to report it, but the rest of the media is not reporting it. 95,000 people recovered. And most of these people recovered within 24 hours. Very few lasted 48 hours. Most people were back to their fighting um, strength within 72 hours. Okay, so again, nocebo. What is nocebo? If you think it's going to happen and you create that thought and process, then you make it happen. So placebo is thinking that something's going to help you, even though it has no uh, actual components that are going to make you better, but you think it's going to make you better and it gets better. And so people poo-poo that and say, ah, you know, that's not, that's not valid because it's only placebo. Well, why isn't it valid? I don't care what got the person better because if it's placebo, if they believe that they could get better and they got better, then we should be harnessing that power. We shouldn't be ridiculing it and minimizing it. We should be embracing it and, and promoting it and, and learning how to harness the power of placebo so we can help more people. Well, nocebo is the opposite. Nocebo is if you think it's going to cause a problem and your mind starts thinking, oh my God, I'm going to, it's, it's a medical student syndrome, okay? Because when you're in medical school, medical students start thinking everything that they're learning about that they've got that disease. It's the same thing. And it happens. It's nocebo. It's the opposite. So many of these people that could have died, could have been nocebo. And I'm not saying people haven't died. There's some people that have had serious issues. And I've even had some friends of mine tell me, oh, well, these people were young, athletic, and healthy, and they're in the ICU. Well, remember, just because somebody's young and athletic doesn't mean that they're healthy. This happens all the time. You have marathon runners that drop dead right after a marathon or right before a marathon or during a marathon, and they've run many marathons. Well, how can a person who runs marathons drop dead? Well, they have very high lactic dehydrogenase levels. I don't know what their toxicity levels were, et cetera, et cetera. There's a biological individuality. There's a genetic uniqueness component here. But usually, most deaths come from most pathology comes from a combination of one of two things. One, nutrient deficiency. Two, uh, increased level of toxicity. So keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, let's move on.